All right. Hey, how's it, everybody? It is 5 p.m. West Coast time, 2 p.m. Hawaii time, 8 p.m. on that East Coast, and 7 p.m. for our Central Time folks. And I can see already we've got at least two Central Time folk in the house. Hey, Darlene. Hey, Rick. How's it going on? And we've got Shock in the house, making sure that we've got our gear, and Rick coming in, making sure we got our gear as well. We do. E music, you'll be lurking and listening because you're making cookies for your auntie in LA. That sounds great. But before you head on out, before you start lurking, lurking, could you let us know what kind of cookies? Because, you know, cookies. We could talk about cookies today. That's for gosh darn sure. Don't have a whole lot to, a whole lot to talk about yet. Um, so, cookies sounds like a great start. One of the reasons why I don't have a lot to talk about today is because I had this brilliant idea. I went and I did some things and stuff, and then I realized, oh no, that's a story for Whale Talk Wednesday, and Whale Talk Wednesday isn't for another few days, so I've got something ready for Wednesday, but today, today is not Wednesday, so yeah, um, okay, so let's see here, Shock, you're saying all you can talk about is Mandalay food, all right, so... What's Mandalay food? Because I can honestly say I don't really know what that is. I mean, Mandalay Bay is a resort in Las Vegas, right? All right. Well, before we start thinking about cookies and Mandalay Bay food, why don't we just get this party started? Oops. Hold on. Right, so, okay, so it's Burmese food. Okay. Now, that leads me to another question. And I don't want to get into the politics of it, because I think it touches on politics. It has more, really, I want to just get into, am I making this up, or am I right? Burma would be where Burmese food comes from, right? But Burma isn't called Burma anymore, is it? Or did it used to be called Myanmar? Okay, so it is Myanmar. I'm not just making stuff up. (sighs) Sometimes I make stuff up, but apparently I did not make stuff up. Myanmar, Burma, same thing, different time frame, different era, same things and stuff. Got it. Excellent. Thanks for clearing that up, Shock. That makes me happy. And Kenny from the Cove, good to see you. You know, you weren't here yesterday, so you didn't get to um, see the Muppet movie, but that's okay because um, it seemed like everybody really enjoyed the Muppet movie. So you know what? I think that Muppet movie is going to be on that list of movies we're going to rerun one day. Because I know E-Music had to miss it because she was getting caught up in a novel. And um, I know you had to miss it, Kenny, because you were making sauerkraut. And I'll tell you right now, if you were closer, uh, and I mean a lot closer, like if I lived within driving distance of your house, I would totally be coming over to your house to steal some of your sauerkraut. But I don't want you to mail any sauerkraut to me because... um, don't mail sauerkraut. Just don't. Don't. I don't even want to think about the tragedy that might happen. First off, stinkiness maybe, wetness maybe, but ruined and wasted sauerkraut is the big problem. So we won't we won't talk about that. But if you were within driving distance, you know I'd come steal your sauerkraut. Hey, Anwer, good to see you. Pakola T lurking from Tanaka Simon. Oh, okay. I almost went there, I think. I think... Tea, is that where you and Thomas met? Because I feel like that's where he wanted to go. And I never did get a chance to um, get there. Um, but I think that that's where, um, that's where Thomas the Turtle wanted to meet, uh, wanted everybody to meet when, um, when you and me and him were all coordinated in Oahu for a brief second, even though that didn't ever get happened. We didn't ever coordinate, but we were actually there um, for like a half a second all on the island. And, um, Kenny, yes, you did miss the movie, but you're getting six pints of homemade sauerkraut. That, now, not trying to tell you what kind of choices you should be making in your life, but six pints of free sauerkraut is a good 
darn choice. Good choice. Good choice. And let's see here. Um, Shock, you were going to go to Burma to stay at other husband's family compound, but then this pandemic thingy and some political whatever. Got it. Got it. And um, let's see here. Um, oh, okay, Anne. Um, let's see here. Uh, is Spam Musibi shows... Anne has a really good question, and my best guess is, given the date, it probably is, but... Is tomorrow really National Spam Musubi Day? Tomorrow being 8 08. Get it? Get it? And, um, and I don't know if it's a real thing. I have no idea if it's a real thing. But I do know that there is like a, um, like a spam festival that they have in Hawaii. So I feel like this is a possibility of a real thing. But we've got real, we, but we've got real people in here that could maybe answer the question, um, unlike fake people like me. Um, and by real people, I mean people who really live on the island, not people who don't know what they're talking about, like me. And um, Kenny from the Cove, exactly. If it ain't a real thing, it should be. And the day needs to be eight oh eight. I mean, duh. I mean, duh. What, what? That's the. That's just the. It has to. And it has to be. It has to be real. I believe. I believe. And if I had that song queued up right now, you better know I'd be playing it. And um, Rick says, yep, LNL Hawaii Barbecue will celebrate National Spam of Subi Day on August 8th. Oh, fantastic. I should maybe go um, to my local LNL. Actually, to tell you the truth, now I could go to my local LNL. That is true. But there's this Micronesian market um, in my town. And it sells a lot of random stuff. Um, but one of the best things that it sells is right by the front counter. It just has a hot, not a hot plate, but like a hot box, a, a heating lamp over a cardboard box um, that's just full of Spam Musubis. Actually, that's a lie. I don't think they're Spam Musubis. I think they're Tulip Musubis, not Spam brand. Um, but I'll tell you, dude, whatever sauce it is that they use, well, the Micronesian market doesn't make them. They get them from wherever. But wherever they get them from, the sauce that they use in the little musubis that maybe not be spam, I think they're actually tulip. Um, oh, so tasty. So I might actually just go to my Micronesian market and then get a um, an off-brand spam musubi instead, which sounds really awful. Off-brand spam? Are you kidding me? But no, it, it's tasty. The only reason why I thought I noticed that it was probably not spam was the um, the meat, uh, the slice. It was just a little bit, it was shaped different. Because you know what a spam can shape is. And this was just a little bit like a little skinnier and longer as opposed to fatter and shorter. Does that make sense? Like I think it was the same. I think the tulip spam and the... I think the tulip canned meat and the spam canned, spam canned meat both have the same amount of meat in them. They're just different shaped um, lumps of meat, <laughs> which that didn't sound very tasty. Not as tasty as they are. And um, and where you got your 25% less sodium Hormel spam all set. Honestly, Ann, I don't really know. I mean, normally I'm all about like, oh, who cares about the salt, blah, blah, blah. Oh, dude, no, seriously. I don't know anybody who eats original Spam. I mean, like, everybody seems to ha get the 25% less sodium because it's, even me, because it's just like, how is that even 25% less sodium? My God, it is so flippin' salty. And like, the original stuff is mm, saltier. Um, don't get me wrong, I'd still eat the original. But yeah, I mean, like, the 25% less sodium is kind of like, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's my Spam as well. And, um... Let's see here. Kenny from the Cove, there's a Hawaiian food truck and two Hawaiian restaurants that you got to check out to see if they're offering anything special for the day. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, uh, I think that that's, I think, yeah, we should all, um, uh, I, I'm not trying to tell anybody how to li live their life. You know, that's not my motto. But may I strongly suggest we all take to the streets tomorrow looking for our local Spam Musubi deals. There we go. Oh, shock. She's just like, oh, no, honey. Mm, I get full salt. Blah, blah, blah. 
I can't even say it, Shock. That's how horrified I am. Not really, no. But she's like, I get full salt spam. Um, good for you uh, I, that you can that you can handle it. I'm not that salt sensitive, but even still, because I mean, I I like you need some salt, but even still for me, it's just like that's a little bit too thick. This is a little bit too too much. A little too much salt. And um, let's see here. And you're actually salt sensitive, right? So you have to make sure um, your market had the less the less stuff. Yeah. Kenny from the Cove on an old episode of MASH, they molded a bunch of spam into the shape of a lamb to celebrate Greek Easter. I actually remember that one. Um, that was a good one. I remember that. Because wasn't it now, okay, for those of you who never watched MASH, you're going to be bored by this conversation. But for those of you who did watch, watch MASH, maybe you can help me. Kenny, that episode where they're going to feed uh, a lamb to the Greeks at Easter, didn't the Greeks actually bring a lamb for the feast? And didn't Radar get super pissed off and he stole the lamb and like hit it so they couldn't make the lamb for the Easter? Or is that a different episode? Or more likely, am I just making that up? <laughs> I don't feel like I am, though. But am I? <laughs> am I? <laughs> and um, let's see here. Uh, let's see here, Andre. You stopped eating spam because I was backpacking and we do not have that much water. So you stopped eating it on camping trips. And that's when you're used to eating it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh, okay, so Chuck, your sodium levels are low. Trying to bring them up. My potassium levels are low. Um, when I went and got my little... Um, my little cat bite blood work done by Kaiser, they were like, uh, your potassium is not in a good spot, girl. Go take these potassium medicines for a few days. So I did. Um, and so let's see here. Kenny, okay, yes, Radar set the live lamb free so it wouldn't get killed. See, I thought like he maybe gave it to a farmer or something, but okay, see that, um, that is exactly, that's exactly what I thought. And, um, Andre, you like that? Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Andre, uh, you like the canned corned beef? They eat it in Fiji and Samoa, and it comes from Australia and New Zealand. Gosh, you know, I don't know if I've ever had corned beef in a can. I do know that my mom made corned beef once, and it was so gross um, that I've never tried it again. Now, that doesn't mean that corned beef is gross. Let me make that clear. What it could mean is, A, as a child, I just wasn't fond of it, and as an adult, I might love it. Or B, uh -huh. my mom had never made corned beef before. She didn't know what she was doing. She didn't really like it either. So I kind of feel like she messed it up somehow. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not a fan of corned beef. But um, that doesn't mean that corned beef isn't delicious. And But canned corned beef, I don't... I don't know if I could bring myself to eat tanned corned beef. I only eat canned processed pork products, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and um let's see here um uh so it looks like um oh hey poppy shaney pop it in good to see you right now we are talking about off-brand spam spam musubi day and the horrors of canned corned beef according to me which actually i'm the only one who thinks that so there you have it um uh <laughs> Kenny from the Cove, you could tell by looking at me that I was low in potassium for a while. All right, good for you. I think you're being silly, but um, yeah, I definitely was apparently low. And funny thing about potassium is um, it makes your heart beat. <laughs> and there's this thing, um, I don't know if you know it, but the heart is kind of an important thing to keep beating. So um, yeah, Poppy Shaney, canned corned beef, huh? Apparently it's a thing. It's made in Australia or New Zealand. It's eaten in Samoa and Fiji, and Andre prefers it to spam. Whereas I say, okay, Andre, you can come sit next to me, and I will trade you all of my corned beef <laughs> for all of your spam. And then we'll both be happy. There you go. Um, and let's see here. Um, Canned corned beef, especially a lot of American brands, but uh, brands they sell in Asian markets, Palm and Ox is a good brand. Okay, okay, yeah, for sure. The Asian-oriented canned foods are oftentimes different than what we get here in the States. So, um, 
so let's see here. Um, for Fiji, since they have lots of Muslims, they make corn mutton too. That sounds gross for a lot of reasons. Mostly though, because I'm not a fan of mutton. It, I like, I thought I was. Well, okay, let me rephrase that. I don't really know. Like, I ate this mystery meat. It was a kebab at a restaurant that would serve kebabs. Um, and the meat tasted good at first. It was kind of greasy, a little bit heavy, but it tasted good at first. But by the time I finished with the kebab and by the time I went back to work, I was like, oh, 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 my tummy. My tummy doesn't feel very good. So, um, so I, when I asked somebody like, well, what do you think it was that I ate? They were like, I'll bet you it was mutton, but still we don't know. But assuming that it was mutton, I don't know if I like mutton. <laughs> um, let's see here. Anne, what was that expensive canned stuff that's made in Washington I talked about in another show? The canned cheese? Um, are you talking about the big two pound can of um, cheese that the universe, that Washington State University created for the soldiers in World War II? And it's like an expensive cheese. Is, is that what you're talking about? That cheese good, but it's expensive. Um, and um, yeah, exactly, Kenny. Undone by a sketchy kebab. Exactly, exactly. Oh, hey, Poppy Shaney, thank you so much for gifting. Um, for uh, gifting the uh, sub to eMusic. And Shock, thank you so much for noticing I didn't forget the music. Yes, it was on my little, um, it was on my little uh, checklist. And um, <clears throat> let's see here. Andre, you were wrong. It's the Hindus that eat the corn mutton? Well, I know that Hindus aren't supposed to eat beef, but do they not eat uh, lamb and sheep as well? I mean, I... What? Yeah, I, Hindus, Hindus don't eat cow, but I thought that they ate... I mean, actually, I really didn't give much thought beyond they don't eat cow, but assuming they don't eat cow, I presume they ate the other meats, like the porks and the the lambs, or the muttons, the sheeps, the sheepesses. Um, so, uh, let's see here. Um, <laughs> oh, the number of times food that has just laid me low. Yeah, totally, dude. Um, and... Oh, okay, so, okay, all right. I completely misunderstood, Andre, what you were saying. So they eat corned mutton instead of corned beef. When you said corn mutton before, I was thinking a vegetarian option that's marketed as mutton made with corn, which confused the flying fork out of me. Now I get what you're saying. And um, yeah, and where a lot of Hindus are vegetarian, but some are not. Um, in fact, um, I randomly met this dude who um, lived in India, cannot remember what, uh, what city, but we were, I was chatting somewhere online one night and, um, and his family was a vegetarian, but he did make it very clear that no, you don't, not all Hindus are vegetarians. He also made it very clear that <clears throat> the Hindus that are vegetarians do look down on the Hindus that eat meat a little bit, at least in his family, because his family's vegetarian. Um, so, <laughs> so, um, so you're right, most are, not all are, but, <laughs> but I think it sounds like they're sort of public shamed into like, you really should be. Um, at least in his community. And by the way, I think we all know India is so huge that when it's just like I say, so, I met this one guy who lives in this one city in India. That's reflective of this one guy's experience in this one city in India. Because India, as we all know, flippin' flippin' huge. And hey, Tim, Timix77, how are you doing? We're talking about things like cookies, although I have not found out what cookies um, eMusic is baking other than for her auntie in LA and we're talking about corned beef and then we're talking about whether or not Hindus are vegetarians and it turns out 
Yeah, some are, some aren't. At least that's the consensus we've come to so far. Yeah, some are, some aren't. <laughs> and so, welcome in. I hope you enjoy yourself here with the Chatterbox. I'm Mad Statter, by the way. This is Chatter with Statter, so welcome in. And, um, all right, so, let's see here. This week, I have been working on some things and stuff, and I've got one, I might have a couple more, maybe, mm, uh, I'm not going to promise that I have many more Hawaii videos. There might be some Hawaii video, a ho one more Hawaiian video that I can scrounge out of the footage that I've taken, but I think... I've um, scoured my Hawaii footage from June in Oahu enough that I've created most of the videos that I'm going to make. It, and then, so this one that we're going to see today is maybe the final one. And, and exactly, yeah, one person amongst over a billion other Indians. That's why I'm like, well, this one guy that told me this one thing, I know that it's right. For him, you know, I, I definitely um, <clears throat> wanted to make that clear. Because, you know, you know. <laughs> I would hate to think that some random American on a television show or somewhere was the representation for the entire American population. Because Lord knows if the wrong Florida man is the one that got on um, <clears throat> as the representation, I'm not so sure I'd be okay with that representation. Right? Right. So, um... So there you have it. And, um, okay, E-Music, e e you're making oatmeal cookies with walnuts, no raisins. Well, I would still eat them. Now, if there was raisins, I would eat them all. But since there's no raisins, I'll leave one or two for you. So you can send them to your auntie. Yummy, yummy, yummy. I love oatmeal cookies. Because oatmeal cookies, one of the things about oatmeal cookies is you can eat one for breakfast and not feel too bad. Whereas when you've got a chocolate chip cookie, it's just like, that's a cookie. You know, there, there's no redeeming quality about that cookie. Um, but an oatmeal cookie, you're just like, well, there's oats, right? There's oats. And if it has raisins, you can be just like, and it's got fruit too. I agree, Anne. It's got to have raisins. That's why I would eat all of the ones with raisins, but I'll leave two that don't have raisins. I can promise I leave two. And um, let's see here. Um... Uh, shock. Okay, yeah, says so shock coming in. There were enough non-vegetarian Hindus in India to keep my friend Sean occupied working with chicken farmers for two years in the Peace Corps. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, we wouldn't have a beautiful, what is it, that butter chicken dish that I actually hate, but um, everybody else in the world loves. You wouldn't have butter chicken without non-vegetarian Hindus, right? And um, Kenny from the Cove, oatmeal cookies masquerading as chocolate chip cookies is why you have trust issues. Fair enough, fair enough. I kind of feel that way about oatmeal cookies with chocolate chips, and then I think they're going to be raisins, and then I'm like, what? That's a chocolate chip? And then I'm like, and then my other voice in my head is like, um, are you complaining about a chocolate chip? At which point I go, no, and so then I eat them. <laughs> there you have it. There you have it. Um... All right, so as I was saying, um, I created one last video that's probably going to be the last Hawaii video um, of the season, as it were. Um, but I have to say, this video, <clears throat> yeah, boy, this video was a learning curve, not a learning curve. It was just sort of like a reinforcement of you knew better, you knew better, you knew better, and yet you didn't do it. And I didn't do it. And uh, yeah, that's why this video, yeah, this video is going to be sponsored by Windex because there's a spot on the windshield that I did notice, but I thought, oh, it'll just be really tiny. It won't be in the shot. It won't be noticeable. Oh, yeah, except for, um, mm, except for it's completely noticeable. So, yeah, um, now that I've pointed it out to you and you won't be able to not see it, just remember, this video that we're going to be watching, yeah, it's it's sponsored by Windex. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, 
<laughs> On that note, don't look at the dot.
There you have it. Um, that's my that's my little masterpiece. So um, glad to know that you guys were losing losing track of the uh, of the spot of the dot. Um, Windex would be proud, I guess, maybe. <laughs> but you know, once your eye, at least you know how it is. Once you spot like the one. Okay, there was a couple things more than just one. But, you know, the one thing that's really wrong, like, once you see the error, you just, you can't not see it anymore, you know? So, <clears throat> that dot, I was just like, oh, it's been with me for so many of those videos, but in this particular one, it just seemed to strike out so much, or stand out so much. But, yeah, that was the wind, uh, windward side. <clears throat> Kualoa, <clears throat> Ka'aava, Kahana, um, stretch on Oahu, and, um... 
It is my dream to live there one day, and if I can't live there one day, then my ashes sure is sure is shirt better be uh, spread over there on that that their beaches and those waters. So, um, so uh, I don't know if you guys noticed or not on that particular stretch before we got to the Kualoa Ranch, there was this um, this uh, building uh, remains um, a huge. 35 foot tall coral brick built uh, smokestack and that was the original uh, the very first sugar mill ever on Oahu was at the Kualoa Ranch. It was built in like 1863 and it was in operation until 1871 in 1871 they realized that there wasn't enough water in the area to grow sugar cane now I find that a little okay first off Obviously, they knew what they were talking about, but I find that a little bit weird because I consider that side of the island to be the wet side of the island. And so it's like, if there's not enough water over there to grow sugar, well, then where in the Flying Fork are you going to grow the sugar? Obviously, other islands, I guess. But, um, but yeah, so this is what I'm talking about. And um, this is the, oh, whoops, hold on. Hmm. Oh, I know what I I know what I need to do. Hold on. I didn't do something that I needed to do. There we go. That's what I needed to do. So, um so anyway, this is part of the original um sugar mill uh that was first built on Oahu and um apparently, like I said, it was built in 18, between 1863 and 1875, and then by 19, 1871, they had abandoned it. Now, shortly after um, the, uh, <clears throat> shortly after the sugar mill was built, apparently one of the people, it was two sets of families that built the sugar mill, and one of the sets of families, one of their kids fell into a vat of boiling processing sugar um and uh he did not survive um so uh after that happened the mom of that family was like i can't live here anymore so she left and then the um the father of that um child also after like a year after his wife left he was like you know i gotta get out of here too so he he deeded the rest of the land to the other family and um and then like a year later, the uh, <clears throat> the sugar mill closed. But that is the little history of that um, that remnant uh, building that you might have noticed in, in the video. And I, I, I didn't know at the time what it was. In fact, it wasn't until just a few days ago when I was doing this video that I that I looked at, I was like, what is that? I really wanna know what was that thing that I kept driving by? Um, and so I found out, and, and now you know as well. So um, yeah, that's a little, a little spooky, scary history, because um, it kind of looks like a spooky, scary place. Um, and yeah, uh, let's see here, there you go. That's, that's, the little, that's the little history lesson for the day. And um, let's see here, what else did I have to talk about? Ooh, um, I remember something, but I also forgot. So hold on, let's see here. Um, E-Music. Missionaries built that area mill and tried growing but left for Kauai. Uh, it was the Rice family. Oh, okay. Um, that's, not the, that's not the name the internet told me, but that doesn't mean the internet was right. <laughs> but, um, but I do know, or I didn't know that they were missionaries, but that totally makes sense. But yeah, they, um, <laughs> they closed that mun and then I guess, yeah, the family that still remained with the, um, with the plantation might have moved to Kauai. The guy whose kid who died, he ended up getting out of the sugar game altogether and made his fortune apparently inter -island, on inter-island shipping, um, or so the internet tells me, but that wasn't the part of the story I cared about, so, <laughs> so there you have it, um, so there we have it. So, uh, I am going to, I remembered I needed to grab something and I forgot to grab it, so while I'm going to go grab the something... I'm going to play, um, I'm going to play our, 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 um, a, a little bit of a Lono listening lounge moment. So there we go. And, um, 
And let's see here, Darlene. Oh, wait, before we do the Lono listening moment, we're going to see. Darlene, it's a good sight to see. You saw it too. Yeah, if you're, you can't really miss it if you're driving along that route. And um, yeah, Miles now is on Oahu visiting. And I really wish, like, I know I'm not Andy. I know I can't make him look as good as Andy makes him look good. I know my editing is mm, a lot less than Andy's. But gall dung it, I really wish that he would send me some videos so I could share them with you guys. Um, Cause gall dung it, he's on vacation. Why can't be? Why can't we be on vacation with him too? All right. So, on that note, let's go to the Lono Lounge. Okay. Some of my childhood raised here on Molokai, Puuohoku Ranch, 14,000 acres. 7,200 head of Charlie brand cattle from Canada. There's a cowboy there, Paniolo, and Imonaki, James Imonaki, one of the oldest cowboys on the ranch. But as a kid, I got to work with him. Putting up fence poles, hanging gates, fixing pipelines. And he kind of talk like this. He talk like this, he got the gravel voice. I'm gonna use his voice on this song. <laughs> Ana Paula. Let's go, gang. Oh, yeah. 
All right. So I don't know why the sync for the sound is off. I have no doubt in my mind that that's probably my problem. But, you know, I don't know how to fix it. I don't know. But um, Lono is such a chameleon, Pecola T. I totally agree. What can he not sing? Um, I don't know. You know, I'm going to guess that he can't sing like some boy band stuff or something like maybe new kids on the block um you know maybe but <laughs> but the idea of like seeing him try to do the little boy band dances in my mind like does make me giggle i'd like to see him try but i don't think i don't think that he could i, I don't think he could sing that song but that's about the only song i don't type of song music he probably can sing because i'll tell you <clears throat> uh he sent me a song that he made a long, long, long time ago. I don't have it queued up, otherwise I would play it. But it's kind of a hip-hop song. Like, he's rapping in it. And it's just like, wow, you know, I never would have thought of him going in that direction with his music. But yeah, Chameleon. Like, what is genre for him? It doesn't matter. He has no genre. He goes where his inspirations lead him, as it were. And yeah, exactly, Anne. And Lono, it's New Kids on the Block. It was the most ridiculous thing I could think of, basically. Um, I mean, actually, my first ridiculous thought was in sync, but because I'm too old to really know or picture in sync, I couldn't. So I was like, oh, I'll just go picture a new kid on the block. That I, I know my brain can make that. Pi my brain can make that picture. <laughs> um, and Kenny from the Cove. Yeah, exactly. New kids on the block are sold now. They're the old farts on the corner. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you know, though, um, they are actually, uh, I don't know if they're in Hawaii as we speak, but they were in Hawaii, I think, on Friday. And um, and on Friday, like this last Friday, a few days ago, August, let's just say 5th, um, the state of Hawaii deemed it the official new kids on the block day for the state of Hawaii. This last Friday. Because they were in town, they were playing. A, they were playing a gig, I guess. Um, so Hawaii still, still loves New Kids on the Block. Apparently, in fact, apparently Hawaii was one of the first places that New Kids on the Block really got big. Um, that's um, that was one of the first markets that um, that they had success in. Apparently, uh, I learned I learned all that from Billy V Live, and. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, why? No, because I think it's because um, they were playing. You know, I th okay, first off, um, it was just one of those honorary days that are like one. It's not like every August 5th is going to be New Kids on the Block Day. It was just, you know, that one day. But it was, um, it was uh, deemed the New Kids on the Block Day this last Friday. And um, let's see here. Kenny, you can't picture Lono playing thrash metal. I can picture him playing it. I don't see it as a choice of music he would play, but I think he could. Like, you know, he does have he does have electric guitars and stuff. You know, he does know how to play electric guitars. And he's a really good guitar player. So it's like, I don't know, any kind of metal, I mean, it's just like it's just has to do with your distortion, etc. I mean, I'm not necessarily sure he would um choose to play it but I bet you he could play it whereas I'm not so sure he would choose to try to be a new kid on the block but um but you know <laughs> I don't know <laughs> maybe he has some deep-seated fantasy to be along with you know four other guys of his age on stage doing coordinated dance moves I just don't see it happening but I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and um, a shock, exactly. A gentleman is a man who knows how to play the bagpipes, but chooses not to. <laughs> um, let's see here. Shock, you have to go now, like right now? Okay, I don't know what just happened, but you got to go, so you go. <laughs> and Andre, I... Andre is saying he hulas, so maybe he could do the steps. Honestly, as I was saying those words in the back of my mind, that was exactly what I was thinking. I was like, well, you know, he does hula. He does know how to hula. So, um, yeah, so there we have it. So, now, the reason, though, why I chose that particular song was because a song about 
Um, oh, he'll come back when we stop ridiculousing the Lono. Well, I think we might be stopping now. I think we might be stopping now. Um, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. So, um, so the reason though why I chose that song is because the song was about, you know, being a Paniolo, right? A Paniolo. Well, you guys might have been here a few weeks ago, a few streams ago, when I was fangirling all over these particular Paniolo shoes, these little flip-flops, rubber slippers that aren't really rubber, they're leather. And a lot of you were like, you should get them. And then a lot of you were like, that's just stupid. You shouldn't get them at all. And, um, and you're both right. So, um, so I didn't get those ones. Instead, I got something better. I got them in black. Yes, that's right. Because these ones, if you didn't notice, these ones are brown. And brown is good. And I thought that they didn't have them in black, so that's why I was fangirling over the brown ones. But then online, I found the black ones. And so I've got, whoops, here we go. I've got black flip-flops. I've got black paniolo flip-flops. Um, and so that was um, why I had to play that video because I had to go get those so I could show them off. And there you have it. Andre, the next, the fur-lined slippers from Matt's. Yeah, I, I don't really know if I want fur-lined ones. Because um, if it's cold enough for fur-lined, then I want my toesies covered. And, um, and oh, thank you, Darlene. You think they're really pretty? And th Exactly, and black. Exactly, black. Hello? I couldn't, and Kenny, exactly. Saw the black and couldn't hold back. That was precisely it. Actually, that's not really true. Um, Andre sent a link. He's like, here's a bunch of them for cheaper. Um, and while I was perusing those links, I was like, oh my God, there's a black one and um, there's a black pair. And then I clicked on the link and I was like, oh, and they come in my size. So I bought them in my size and they were actually cheaper than what I thought they were going to be. So everything, everything came up roses. Everything came up black roses. And um, yeah, exactly, Andre. And the black ones were the cheapest ones too. <laughs> Exactly. It couldn't have been more perfect. So, um, so I want to thank everybody who might have donated some biddies or uh, encouraged me to to find my find my dream shoes because I, I listened to your words. Um, and for those of you who told me not to do it, I listened to your words too. And quite honestly, I was probably going to listen to you. But then I found them in black. Then I found them in black. And as Shock says, IT rule, if it's black, it's formal. So those are my formal flip-flops. I don't think, um, yeah, I'll, I don't think I've got many places to go in my formal flip-flops. Granted, even if I had formal um, sequined pumps, I wouldn't have any place to go, really, because formal, what is that? What is formal? <laughs> um... Yeah, exactly, and it's like, well, if it's in my color, suddenly it changes absolutely everything. You have to, you, you know it, girl. You know it. And um, that is that is a fact. So, hey, you guys. Um, oh, hold on. I'm going to mute my thing so I can open my pample mousse. I didn't want you to hear the, the snap, crackle, and pop of the pample mousse. Um... Let's see here, Andre, I need to be formal. I am the WAO pageant queen. That's true. Next time I visit the dumpster, I better wear my formal slippers. And um, and uh, let's see here. And Anne, yeah, they'll last longer since the grunge on it won't show. That's true, although the dark brown ones generally, those um, those ones age quite beautifully as well. But the there was a cup there was a couple different gonna say there's a couple different flavors there's a couple different colors of those flip-flops one of them was like a sand color one of them was like a really light black light brown and then the other one was the dark brown and the sand color and the really light brown it was just like well those are just asking to get dirty those are silly um, but the dark brown ones or the black ones well they're not silly at all right um, and Kenny, wait, what? You mean that formal means more than you comb your hair and wear clean socks? Well, Kenny, 
I can't say that it's more than that because here's the deal. I don't comb my hair ever. So, um, yeah. So, you know, even when it's formal, you don't necessarily have to comb your hair. <laughs> And yes, Darlene, I did get a chance to visit the favorite yellow WA dumpster. I even took a picture of it. I don't have it uploaded here yet, so it's not on the push button ready. Um, but not only did I visit the dumpster, I actually visited the dumpster twice, because the first time um, I drove around the block to take the picture, and as I was taking the picture, I noticed there were some surfer dudes across the street who may or may not have been interested in something that I needed to get rid of before I got on the plane. So I drove around the block and came up to the surfer dudes again and was like, hey dudes, do you want this things and stuff? And they were like, heck yeah, we want this things and stuff. And so I was able to get rid of my things and stuff that I didn't want to take on the airplane. And um, so it was an all around great visit to the WA dumpster. I got a great picture and I made the local, I made an offering to the locals. So, you know, and the locals were, were very pleased with my offering. So it was all good. It was a good trip to the dumpster. Strange as that is to say. Um, <laughs> a shock. And then I took stuff on the plane anyway. Yeah, well, that wasn't on purpose, okay? I didn't know that I took anything on the plane until I got home. And then when I got home, I was like, oh, whoops. And yeah, yeah, their, their reaction out there was actually, yeah, as I drove away, I literally could hear them shout, yeah, shouting in the background. So I know that, I know that the locals were pleased. I know that. <laughs> I can't say what the locals did with the offering, but I know that the offering made them very happy at first. So there you have it. Um, and uh, yeah. You know, but yeah, your queen, your, the, the, the WAO queen um, is nothing if not a bit of a space cadet. And so, yeah, um, sometimes she spaces things out. And yes, it was definitely meant to be a burnt offering for Sorotin. And, um, but you know, that was okay because... Um, because I, uh, because after I gave away all all the things that I knew that I had to give away, that I knew I had to see that see what I did there, I then went chasing rainbows, and um, yeah, chased the rainbows and um, found a great little spring in the middle of the city. Didn't know um, didn't know where I was, but but I recognized where I was because Photo Luke had taken. Um, had just done like an episode of that particular area. And I was like, hey, I've been here before, except for not really. So there you have it. Um, so uh, Bill Watterson will come after me if I cartoon Statter as Calvin's counterpart. Well, what do you mean? Um, are you saying that I would like take place, I would take place of, of Hobbes? Cause I'm not, I'm not, how would I be Cal Calvin's counterpart? Um, it, uh, I'm not a kitty cat, I'm not a kitty cat. And Darlene, I did find some rainbows actually. Oh, Spaceman Spiff, Space Woman Spliff. I didn't know that, that Calvin had a Spaceman Spiff. I get it now, I get it now. And, um, and let's see here. Uh, Andre, I forget that some places still are not legal states. No, I remember that some places are still not legal states. And I absolutely remember that um, the Federal Aviation Administration uh, doesn't consider anything legal. So, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I remembered. I just didn't remember everything. <laughs> just didn't remember everything. That's all. That's all. <laughs> And yeah, exactly, Chuck. Federal being the key here, it, precisely. Because, um, you know, I was leaving a state where it was sort of legal, and I was going to a state where it was totally legal, but the means upon which I was using to go from one state or another, well, that's a whole other... That's a whole other barrel of worms or monkeys. It's a sticky wicket, as it were. Yeah, exactly. T well, <laughs> well, actually, Rick, 
TSA does like it, I'd be willing to bet that probably like half the agents are just like, score, you don't get this anymore. We're gonna confiscate it. So the TSA probably does like it a little bit, but not in the, not in the way that, you know, that's helpful for me. <laughs> <laughs> TSA might confiscate. Yeah, they might, but then again, they might not. As it turns out, mm, I'm not recommending that. Risking that, though. Not recommending risking that. <laughs> and exactly, Kenny, too many burnt offerings can wreak havoc with one's rememberies. Mm -hmm. And my rememberies are definitely questionable. Which is why half the, which is why half this show is spent by the starter box fact checking me because I'm saying, wait, did I make that up? Wait, did I make that up? Okay, don't quilt me because I might be making this up, but I make up a lot of stuff apparently. Um, let's see here. Man, when you come into the US from Europe, they got the meat and cheese smelling beagle to keep illegal meat and cheese products into the US. <laughs> that's funny. I mean, it makes sense, but still that's kind of funny. And actually that reminds me, um, I saw this on The Daily Show the other day. Um, apparently somebody was flying, I don't know if it was from Indonesia or not, but I think it was. They were flying from Indonesia into Australia and they had two Egg McMuffins in their luggage. I don't know why. Uh, and apparently like that was forbidden. Not only did the Egg McMuffins get confiscated, uh, they got um, an $1,800 fine. Now, I don't know what it is about Indonesian egg McMuffins that Australia is like, we're going to have no part of that. But apparently, Indonesian egg McMuffins and Australia, they've parted ways or something. And Australia is just like, no, we cannot have your egg McMuffin on our land. I think it has something to do with spreading hoof and mouth disease that's going on or whatever. Um... Um, but, uh, but, um, well, no, no, Shock, you're going, you're backwards. You're going backwards. They were coming from Indonesia, going in to Australia. So Australia has no problem with eating pork, right? So I don't know what, whether or not there was pork or not on the Egg McMuffin. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you're getting it. Like, I can see your logic. What, but the, no, you're getting it backwards. It's like. Uh, you know, the, the pork eating people have no problem with the pork, but it's that Egg McMuffin. Arr! And I just don't really understand, like, why would you smuggle a McDonald's anything into another country? I mean, McDonald's is almost everywhere, <laughs> right? I mean, McDonald's is in almost any airport, for goodness sake. I mean, if you love McDonald's that much, you could probably stack up, stock up on your way out after you land it. Um, so I just don't know. I don't know why they were bringing the Egg McMuffin into Australia in their luggage, but it was an $1,800 mistake. And you thought that Egg McMuffins were expensive buying them at the airport. Jesus Christ, jeez Louise. Um, and yeah, exactly, Rick. They probably could have gotten one at the airport anyway. I, that's what I, it's just like. I don't know. I, there had to have been a method to their madness, right? There had to have been a logic. Um, and okay, so right, it was his little snacky snack. You'd think so, but no, it was in his luggage. Like, and apparently he had checked his luggage. Like, so it wasn't. Like he was going to eat it on the flight. Because, yeah, a Egg McMuffin on the flight, actually, that sounds like maybe a nice little snack. It's not going to be too greasy. It's not going to get too much lettuce or sesame seeds all over the place. You're not going to have goop running down your arms. Egg McMuffin's probably not the worst sandwich to eat on a plane, other than the smell of egg, which does drive people nuts. Because, as Kenny said, where could you even hide that? Everyone would smell it. Although I do think he's probably talking about some smuggling in sausages, but I still uh, feel like um, uh, it applies to Egg McMuffins as well, because Egg McMuffins do, you know, have a smell. And um, 
Oh no, I don't know what um, you're talking about with funky Indonesian hollandaise sauce. What are you guys talking about with Indonesian hollandaise sauce? I don't even know what that would be. Okay, Shaq, you've got some you've got some splaining to do once again, once again. Um. Oh, okay. So you're suggesting that they had Indonesian hollandaise on the egg McMuffin because egg McMuffin is a knockoff of eggs Benedict. I know, isn't that weird? It's just like it's actually not a knockoff of eggs Benedict if you don't have the sauce, dudes. The sauce is kind of what makes the eggs Benedict. Now, granted, I don't like the sauce, so I'm happy you removed it. But like. What were you thinking? Um, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Rick McMuffins should have been in the carry on and just grind them on the pines. And um, so let's see here. Uh, well, yeah, I know that the Indonesians are influenced by Dutch colonialism, but I s still would be willing to. I mean, if if Shock was saying funky Indonesian holiday sauce. I can only assume that um, it's got a little bit of an Indonesian twist to the traditional, as it were, you know? I mean, because hollandaise sauce, you know, it's sort of considered a base sauce to create other sauces with. That's where Bernays comes from, etc., etc. So, you know, the um, the Indonesians could have had a Indianese sauce. I don't know how to say it, but they could have had a funky Indonesian hollandaise with some kind of weird spice, right? Um, and um, shock, right, oh, saying that the recipes are not always the same overseas, so maybe it would include something like a sauce, um, uh, you know, like a, like a satay, satay hollandaise sauce. There you go, there you go. That sounds gross, but yeah, there you go, there you go. Um, and you're right, though. You're, you're right, actually. You do bring up a good point, Chuck. The egg McMuffin that he brought from India, Indonesia, sorry about that. Um, uh, I'll bet you that, or I mean, it could be a very different version of egg McMuffin that we'll, we'll, than we're used to. Very true. Very true. <laughs> Kenny, you can bet whenever you fly out of Texas, there's going to be some Whataburger in your carry-on. <laughs> nice, nice. That reminds me, there's a burger place in Vancouver, British. Actually, I think it's in all of Canada, um, but I know that it's in Vancouver, British Columbia, if nothing else. And it's called The White Spot. And it used to be a drive-in hamburger joint. It has since, it has since evolved into an actual sit-down restaurant. But back in the day, when it, its focus was primarily hamburgers, my mom used to, when she lived in Hawaii, she would make anybody who was flying in from Vancouver to come visit her in Hawaii, she would make them get a White Spot burger and they would have to carry it on and, you know, it would be, you know, a 12 hour old burger by the time she got it, but she didn't care. It was, it was her, um, it was her bestest burger ever. She loved it and, uh, yeah, there you go. And, um, yeah, shock. CNN said it was a foot and mouth precaution. Yeah, I, 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 I heard that too. I still am a little bit confused about. I mean, if I, I yeah, I, I obviously I guess I don't know how foot and mouth disease is um uh, was or are created or spread. I guess so. I just don't really like really an egg McMuffin is gonna bring foot and mouth disease into into Australia. All right then. All right then. Um. Oh, okay, so it wasn't just... Okay, so, all right, so the Daily Show where I got my news is a little bit questionable. Shock is coming from CNN. It was an egg and beef sausage McMuffin and a ham croissant. All right, then. Well, let me just tell you this, Indonesia. You've got better breakfast options than we do in the U.S. What's with this ham croissant? Give me one now. That sounds delicious. Um... And let's see here. The white spot would not work in your area. There'd be a demonstration against them. Well, I think it had to do... There was a reason for the name. And it had nothing to do with race. It had everything to do with, like, 
the original location was built at a former blah 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 and it was you know I, I don't really know but um it's it's this very old very very old um restaurant and their logo is a white chicken um which is weird because they're not known for their chicken but their logo is a white chicken it's a very round chicken it's a very cute chicken and hey vanilla coke pepsi we were just talking about a canadian restaurant franchise and um i wasn't sure if i was thinking about you wondering like oh if he was here he could tell me if he's got this in his area but um, just out of curiosity, Vin on Coke Pepsi, do you have a restaurant called The White Spot um, in your neck of the woods? Because my mom grew up loving The White Spot hamburgers, and I will admit they're, the hamburgers and the sauce they use on their hamburgers is really good. Um, she loved their little hamburgers. And um, okay, so no, that's more on the West. That's what I thought. I, at first I said it was just in British Columbia, but then I was like, oh, wait, that might not be true. But then I was like, oh, wait, maybe it is. So it's probably more like Alberta, British Columbia. Got it. Got it. All right. Well, they have really good burgers if you ever want to go there. And they also have this one drink. It's a honeydew drink, only it's orange instead of green. So that was weird. Um, But the honeydew drink is very good as well. And um, let's see here. Uh... You have Harvey's and A&W, which is much better. Well, A&W is a, that's a USA thing. And that, um, that's very different than, um, than uh, White Spot. And in fact, actually, the A&W, in the United States at least, is owned by Young, Yum Brands. And so uh, if you want A&W or Kentucky Fried Chicken, you can go to like the same restaurant in White Center because it's an A&W slash Kentucky Fried Chicken. And um, let's see here. Well, Kenny, it looks like Burmese food dinner probably consists of pork with a mango pickle. That's at least um, my best guess. But I don't know. And tea salad is a big Burmese favorite here. Okay, that confused. So, huh? So they eat... What? They... They eat tea leaves in the salad? Or is tea used as a flavoring in the salad? The hell? Fermented green tea salad. Yes. That still doesn't really answer my question. I'm very confused. (laughs) Shock. (laughs) That is so funny. I'm eating noodle dish number six. Okay. <laughs> Noodle dish number six. That is hysterical. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Let's see here. Um, Kenny, your sister still has a huge heavy glass mug she lifted from an AW back in the 70s. If it's in good condition, it's worth a lot. I actually have one. But it's got a chip on the bottom, so um, this thrift store lady o- only sold it to me for two bucks. But she was like, um, she was just like, you know, if this didn't have a chip, I'd be selling it to you for fifteen bucks. Uh, and so, um, so let's see here. Shock is saying you can do tea smoked duck, okay? But that's a Chinese thing. And yes, you eat the tea leaves, okay? Okay. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Come visit me. T- me and you too will love noodle dish number six. As long as it's not too spicy. And, um, let's see. Um, Kenny from the Cove, it's pristine and she won't part with it. Excellent. Actually hand washes it. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah. Nice. Good, good. Um, well, the be- I guess the best that you're going to get is like, put it in your will for me, sis. Put it in your will for me. It's probably as close as you're ever going to get it. <laughs> You've got a place in your area called Burma Bear. It's a fusion of Burmese food and barbecue. Interesting. Um, and um, yeah, okay, so Shock, you know I'm anti carb and I ate some noodle dish number six today. Yes, I did, no quote. I was actually 
wondering about that. I mean, because first off, I was like, I was wondering, like, well, wait, what kind of noodles are they? Clearly, they're not going to be wheat, wheat noodles. But then I was like, wait, wheat noodles, rice noodles, what does it matter? They still got the carb. So, um, all right then. I won't tell anybody. I won't tell anybody, Shock. And it, I'll, and I can promise you, this isn't going to be on the internet. No, not, not at all. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Kenny, yeah, it's just languishing away in her cupboard. That is kind of sad. That is kind of sad. Um, and let's see here. Um, you could have got a chicken kebab, but you did not. Got it. It was rice noodle. And Vanilla Coke Pepsi, a w is all over in Canada. Interesting. I'm wondering if a w in Canada is owned by um, the same... Um, Ah, the same company in the United States that owns A&W, because the company in the United States that owns A&W, like I said, is Yum Foods, and Yum owns Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Um, I think it owns Dairy Queen, but I might be lying about that. It owns A&W, um, so it owns a ton of stuff. So I'm wondering if, and you probably don't know, but if you do know, then let me know. Let us know. Uh, is A&W in Canada owned... By Yum Brands, or is it owned as its own thing? And the reason why I'm asking is because in the United States, it's really rare to see a standalone a &W. Normally, you're going to see them like an a and Taco Bell or an a and KFC, like in my um, in my neighborhood. Uh, so I just like, I think it's neat that you've got a bunch of a and all over the place, but like, that seems really weird. I wonder if it's a different company up there. And by the way, eMusic. Thanks for coming back. And yes, indeedy, I want a cookie. So we'll just pretend to be um, 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 eating cookies right now. And um, it is standalone and it's not owned by Yum. I had a feeling it wasn't going to be owned by Yum. Um, so interesting. And hey, Pussycat, dude, good to see you here talking about a &W Root Beer right now. Apparently a &W Root Beer is really popular in Canada. And... Um, and then we're also talking about just random, I don't know if you're going to believe this, but we're talking about random food stuff. We're talking about food here, isn't that weird? Like, that never happens. Not once, ever. Um, let's see here. Vanilla Coke Pepsi. Yeah, Wendy's and Tim Ho's are set for some reason owned by the same parent company. I did know that. And when I found that out, I was really pissed off because I had always been under the impression that Tim Hortons was very much a Canadian company and not a U.S. company. But when I found out that they're both, that it is owned by a company that has a presence in both countries, it kind of made me annoyed that we don't have Tim Ho's out here. I know there are some in the U.S. I know. But when I say out here, I mean out here closer to where I can put it in my mouth. My mouth. That's all. My mouth. Because they're not close to any... I don't think there's any in Washington. I want to say it's like more of a Midwest, borderland Canadian thing. Whereas if... Wendy's are everywhere here. Tim Hortons should be everywhere here. It's just how that works. And I don't know why Tim Hortons hasn't made a... Hasn't made a... Um, a... Uh, um move on the west coast because we don't really even we don't have a lot of donut shops out here Krispy Kreme is really only in the last 10 years or so come out here and we don't have Dunkin Donuts which I know people on the east coast are just like well how do you live then if you don't have Dunkin Donuts we're stuck with a place called Starbucks that's how we live here um, but seriously dude uh, I don't know why Tim Ho's doesn't come to um to the west coast because we are we are donut deficient just saying just saying and that's right we are talking about burmese food too and i'm just pretending that we're not because the idea of eating tea leaf salad confuses me it confuses me um and let's see here uh oh wow e music interesting there's an a and w standalone um, or there's an a w in your area. I'm assuming it's a standalone, but it's only open in the summertime. Wow, okay. And um, Shock, you lost all your DQs. We 
have lost quite a few, but Burian still has one, and it's actually a um, it's a standalone. Like it's it's not a it's not like a DQ slash. Well, I guess actually it is a DQ slash Orange Julius. I think Andre was asking me about that the other night um, off 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 stream. Um, uh, it's a DQ Orange Julius. I, so I guess it is now that I think about it. It's not really a standalone, but um, but uh, it just says DQ on the on the sign, whereas like the other <clears throat> co fast food places in my area. You know, like the sign will say, you know, Taco Bell, KFC. It'll have both signs, you know. Um, and um, let's see here. Uh, Vanilla Coke, Pepsi, Tim Hortons have trouble. Exa. Oh, oh. <laughs> get ya. Why don't I read the whole thing? Tim Hortons have trouble expanding. Got it. Got it. Um, and then. Puzzy Cat, yeah, Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme is uh, is pretty good, um, but we don't. They're still not very. Um, they're not in every town uh, the way they are in other parts of the country. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, um, but gosh darn it! Now you guys, I want, I want a donut. Gall dung it! I want a donut. Um. <laughs> And let's see here. Tim Hortons is also much cheaper than most places. So in America, it's more expensive to make for some reason. So it'll be much more expensive in America, which is a problem or something. Okay. All right. I mean, okay. I don't know, though, dude. You know, here's the deal. I come from a place where Starbucks started. And so Starbucks is like... the gold standard of how coffee is supposed to be done, you know, and then you've got these East coasters who are like, no, no, no. Dunkin' Donuts coffee is where it's at. And then I have all these Canadian people who are just like, I don't know what you idiot Americans are talking about. Tim Hortons is where you go get your coffee. The coffee jockeys at Tim Ho's are the best. And I have to say, I want to try some Tim Ho's coffee because I've heard enough from Canadian people I respect that the Tim Ho's coffee is pretty tasty. Come on, Tim Ho's. Come on down here. Bring me some coffee. Kenny from the Cove, Voodoo Donuts. There, you said it. Yeah, we don't have any voodoo up in Seattle. We've got, um, but I have been to the original Voodoo Donuts play, uh, shop in Portland. And um, boy, oh boy, it is... If you want to stand in line at 2 a.m. on a Saturday night for a donut, well, by all means, go to the original Voodoo Donuts in Portland, Oregon. They're open 24 hours, and the line is out the door constantly. But they are constantly making their donuts fresh, so that's kind of nice. And um, and let's see here. Uh, um, Vanilla Coke Pepsi. Tim Hortons is only good because it's cheap, and McDonald's actually got in trouble because they stole the recipe for Tim's coffee. And there was a lawsuit? Wow! Trippy, dude! Um, that's crazy. And wait, um, um, well, Kenny, Dutch Brothers is a different animal than Starbucks. Dutch Brothers generally is just the little kiosks, you know? Whereas Starbucks is... Entire storefronts. I mean, they're just, they go for a different market, you know? I mean, it's just, it's just different. Um, let's see here. Used to brew coffee in an old Pyrex coffee pot. That is super cool. And uh, it would be awesome if um, you uh, still had that. Because um, anything of old, old, old school Pyrex is worth a lot. Especially the, like the, um, because they don't make them anymore. The stovetop stuff. Because, you know, they used to have Pyrex um, pa pots. Pots, not just pans. Well, pans and pots. You know, glass that you could see through to boil your water in. Uh, but they don't make those anymore. And you do still have it? Oh, dude, you're so stoked. Because that might be worth a minute. That might be... I mean, I'm not suggesting you sell your contents of your kitchen. But if you ever thought about needing to sell some contents of your kitchen, look up how much that's worth. That might be... Yeah, yeah. Um, 
So let's see here. Um, and, um, oh, and your mom still has some? That's awesome. Now, I'm not trying to tell you what to steal from your mom, but if you're going to steal anything from your mom, steal those pots and pans. Did not say that. Did not say that. Um, and, um, let's see. Is caribou coffee only in the Midwest? I don't know. I've never, um, heard of it. That doesn't mean that it's not around here, but I can say I've never heard of it. And, um, let's see here. Uh, also the Tim Hortons in America, their cups are so big. I don't know if it's just in America where all your drinks are 21 ounces. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> let's see here. Um, Darlene, oh wait, hold on. You're, Darlene's not a big Starbucks fan, nor am I. You've been to some other coffee shops and had some really good coffee, better in my opinion than Starbucks. Starry Starbucks. Oh no. Um, uh, and no, <laughs> no, but see, no, actually our drink sizes here would be eight ounces, 12 ounces, 16 ounces, 24 ounces, and 32 ounces. So... Um, 24 ounces is absolutely an option. So you were only three ounces off. Um, and, uh, what you were probably thinking of though is the pint cups, the 16 ounce cups, because yeah, you're totally right, dude. Nobody in America drinks eight ounces of coffee. Like that's just not what they do. Um, and so, uh, <laughs> yeah. Why are you drinking a gallon of fast food drink? I'm not, I'm just saying this is what, you know, like, okay. Here we go. I just finished this today. Took me a long day, but it's, it was a mango smoothie. 16 ounces is what this is. Plenty people get their coffee in this exact same cup, if it's cold, that is. So, um, uh, why are they drinking gallons of it? I don't know. I don't know. And, um, oh, and where you're already, you've already got your eye on the La Crusette fondue pot from the 60s. Nice, nice. That is funny. And yeah, for everybody, just to clarify, you guys, as far as I'm concerned, Starbucks is the burntest of the burnt burnties that ever did burn. Now, their blonde roast, if you, if you actually want, you know, if you're forced to drink Starbucks, what you're, what you're going to have to do, if you're, there's a gun to your head and you're like, this is the only choice, what you're going to do is you're going to go to Starbucks and you're going to order a blonde roast, blonde roast, pour over. That will be an acceptable cup of coffee, I promise you. Now, when you think blonde roast, you think, oh, that's going to be light. It's going to be airy. No. No, it is not. It's going to be very strong, but it's not going to be as strong as their other burnty burnts of the burnty burntedness. And that's how that works. Oh my goodness, we've got Raiders, and I'm just about ready to leave. Oh, it is half hour uh, past the hour, and it is time to... Um, to wind things up, but before we wind things up, I want to say hello to Terry in Scotland, C. Honda, Carl in Arkansas, Katie Zora. Uh, I was going to say hi to Shock, but she's just saying hi to the Raiders. And let's see, we've got Gina Gamble and we've got uh, all sorts of folks, Pussy Cat coming in, but she's already been here. Yes. So we're just talking about coffee and how really, even though I'm from Seattle and I should be singing their praises, Starbucks coffee is not that good. It's just not that good. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you so much for the biddies, Andre. That is so sweet. And um, Shock, hi. Hi, Shock. How you how you day? <laughs> All right. So so sorry that the um that the stream is over at the moment, but I can tell you that on Wednesday we are going to um, have Whale Talk Wednesday again, and I've got some I have a video that the video was posted as a feel good video and the video is a feel good video, but the conversation that followed the video kind of went down a rabbit hole of horror. And so, uh, yeah, I'll be, um, you know, um, yeah, I'll be, I'll be talking, um, I'll, I'll be talking about the rabbit hole of horror that we went down, that I went down with this feel good video. So, um, so yeah, Oracle Wednesday, Whale Talk Wednesday, we will talk a little bit about it. And, um, 
It looks like OG Sumo Vibe is on. Let me double check. Um, so, okay, so I can raid OG if you want. However, what I can tell you right now is I'm probably not going to be hanging out. So, if you're not really going to hang out at OG's, like, should I raid? Because I'm not going to be hanging out. So, I don't really know if I should raid. Um, let me know if you guys want to head out to OG Sumo Vibes. Otherwise, we might not raid. So, um, and um, uh, Kenny from the Cove, exactly. Speaking of horror, two more months until scary story time. That is right. That is right. We'll have our little Halloween um, our Halloween horror show again. And Shock, you're not going to be able to raid. Yeah, I've got stuff to do afterwards, too. So I think um, unless someone's like, no, no, we got to. I think I might just wind this up today. <clears throat> so I hope to see you on Wednesday. And on Wednesday, not only will it be Whale Talk Wednesday, we will talk a little bit more about what movies we want to watch um, for Satterbox at the Cinema because that silly, silly Muppet movie that we watched was kind of a hit. And so I'm thinking it's time to play some silly movies on Statterbox at the cinema. It'll be silly, silly movie time. There we go. All right, E-Music, you can't either because you're, well, yeah, you're busy making bacon and sell, and making and distributing the cookies. So dis distributing, distributing. Yeah, I don't know how to say that word anymore. All right, then. So I want to thank everyone who subbed and who... Uh, gifted subs and who threw down biddies and who hung out anyway and who um, and who uh, came on in on the raid, etc., etc. All right, then, thanks so much for hanging out. Catch you later.